Hello everyone. Today we'll be discussing the topic posterior palatal seal area. The contents are a definition, anterior vibrating line, posterior vibrating line, functions of PPS, recording of PPS by functional scraping of cast, arbitrary scraping of cast, fluid wax technique using low fusing compound and errors while establishing posterior palatal seal area. The definition, the posterior palatal seal area, it is the soft tissue along the junction of hard and soft palates on which pressure with a physiological limit can be applied by the complete removable dental processes to aid in the retention of the denture. It is the most posterior part of the denture and it consists of a soft and it's, it is a junction of soft and hard palate and it helps in the retention and it also it's an also a structure to which a limit amount of physiological uh, force can be applied it is identified identified as the area between the anterior and the posterior vibrating line the the line into uh, anterior to that is a, a cubic bow shape and it's the anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line is almost straight from hamler notch of one side of the one side to the other and the area between these two lines is known as posterior palatal seal area. Now, anterior vibrating line. It is an imaginary line at the junction of the attached tissue overlying the hard palate and the immediate moving tissue of soft palate. So, it is in a cupid shape and it's a junction of hard and soft palate where it moves it, uh, till the soft palate moves. Now, how to locate the anterior vibrating line? Well, server maneuver is a technique and when the patient is asked to hold both the nostrils and gently blow through the nose. This will place the soft palate inferiorly at the junction of hard palate and the junction can be marked. How to examine soft palate? How does soft palate raise upon ha? And the vibrating line, tonsillar pillars, tonsillar tonsils and oropharynx. So it can be located by asking the patient to make vigorous or ha sound in which we can observe the movement of soft palate and the most anterior most portion to which it is moving. And it's, it is it usually will be an, a cupid bow shape and that is the anterior vibrating line. And it also can be located by instructing the patient to say ah in short because as told before. Now posterior vibrating line. It is an imaginary line at the junction of the upper neurosis of tensor velli palatini muscle and the musculature of soft palate. So it is a junction between the pillars of tensor valley palatine muscle and it is usually directed from the one side of the hamlet notch to the other side of the hamlet notch and usually an arch or a small curve shape or straight line is observed. A posterior vibrating line. Located by instructing the patient to say a uh, in short burst but in normal unexaggerated man. So while saying this, the patient is asked to say the hub sound, but this time the patient is asked to say it unexaggerated or in a normal manner, rather than asking the patient to make a burst sound or uh, exaggerated sound while uh, recording the anterior vibrating line. The posterior palatal seal area also consists of two separate but confluent areas, the posterior palatal seal area and tergomaxillary seal area. The tergomaxillary seal area we can see in A, it is the tergomaxillary area and the B is the posterior palatal seal area. And the, the marked C area is the palatal seal area. Altogether, it's known as palatal posterior palatal seal area. Posterior palatal seal area, it extends medially from one tuberosity to the other. 
and pterygo maxillary seal area it extends through the hamula notch for 3 to 4 mm anterior laterally approximating the mucogingival junction so it extend to uh, 3 or 4 mm anterior laterally approximating the mucogingival junction functions of posterior palatal seal area impression tray uh, with impression tray it establish positive contact posteriorly and prevent impression wash material from sliding down the pharynx and it guides the positioning of impression tray so we can know how to while taking impression will will be guided we can use it as a guide while taking impression how it has to be placed uh, in which direction it is and there is no shift in the tray now create slight displacement of the soft tissue it helps verify retention and seal of potential danger border so the posterior border it helps in the verification of retention in posterior border while taking impression uh, in secondary impression and border molding now in complete denture primary function is retention of the maxillary denture so the mainly the retention of the maxillary denture in the posterior area is depend upon the posterior palatal seal area it reduces the gag, gag reflex by reducing patient awareness of this area and prevent food accumulation beneath the posterior aspect of the denture we know if there is a good seal or posterior seal there will not be any food accumulation between the denture and the mucosa which in turn result in loss of retention and it has to the extent of the posterior seal is corrected so that the patient does not feel any gag does not have any gag reflex while patient talking or any taking food or while swallowing food or drinking water it reduces patient discomfort when contact occurs between dorsum of the tongue and the posterior part of the denture and compensate for volumetric shrinkage that occurs during the polymerization of methyl methacrylate resin so when there is a shortage or shrinkage it helps it compensate the volumetric shrinking of the resin now recording of posterior palatal seal area there are two methods casting scraping of cast which can be functional or arbitrary and impression technique using fluid wax or using low fusing compound the functional scraping of cast that in last we said scraping of cast in that one method is functional scraping of cast the fabricate a trial denture based on master cast in this a trial denture is fabricated on the master cast and the patient is asked to sit in an upright position and the posterior palatal seal area wiped with a gauze and located using a tea burnisher the hamlet notch notches using tea burnisher by palpating the posterior to maxillary tuberosity the posterior vibrating line then the anterior vibrating line is checked and marked using the methods we described uh, before uh, well so maneuver and vigorous ha sounds and non vigorous or unexaggerated ha sound now mark these areas with an in inde indelible pencil so when after uh, locating the anterior and posterior vibrating line we have to mark it using an indelible pencil the trial denture base is inserted to the patient's mouth and the line is transferred to the record base so the, now the trial denture base is placed to the patient mouth so the line that we have drawn is copied onto the denture base now check for the posterior extension of the custom tray and trim that tray the trial base is seated on the master cast and it is transferred and it transfer the recorded posterior palatal seal area So now that area has to be transferred to the cast now scraping of the master cast functionally that means we have to scrape up the uh, cast in this posterior palatal seal area that we have marked and the depth of the scraping should be limited to 1 to 1.5 mm and the 
one third of the uh, uh, one third of the uh, from anterior posterior vibratory line to the posterior vibratory line there should be a depression and it should be more towards the posterior vibrating line the scraped area of the cast is filled with readapting the shell like denture base or by adding auto polymerizing acrylic resin material the modified record base is reinserted reinserted in the patient's mouth and with a mouth mirror kept at the distal end checked for an any space as the patient says a uh, in short unexaggerated manner the presence of space between the record base and soft tissue indicates under post damming and the depth of scraping should be increased the procedure is repeated until no space exists advantages the trial base has increased retention by doing this method we have increased retention and enhancing the accuracy of jaw relation procedures so any procedure that has to be done that comes precisely just before the x-rays um, provides the accuracy of the or uh, added into the accuracy of the upcoming steps when the fabrication of the denture the patient can experience and is aware of the retentive qualities expected from the final denture so there will be retention in the before uh, before the final denture uh, delivery the patient is also aware of the amount of retention denture will possess now the adjustment period with regard to posterior extension of the denture is less for the patient the disadvantage is it is technique sensitive so a patient who is or a Uh, the uh, clinician or the patient should be uh, doctor should be more aware of the procedure while doing the procedure and and it is te- technique sensitive the excessive scraping of the cast lead to over post damming so the over scraping of the uh, cast causes more of the uh, material to be added on to the area and it causes more more or excessive post damming on the post term the arbitrary scraping of the muscle cuffs so arbitrary means with an intuition uh, something which is done and without any proper uh, or proper without any evident based um, steps most uh, mostly done by technician prior to the process processing the danger when the dentist fails to establish the seal clinically so when after doing the procedure and we are not able to get the seal clinically we do an arbitrary scraping of that we we mark it according to the clinician's idea or the doctor's idea and a, and as i told the amount 1 to 1.5 depth of the uh, depth of the cast is trimmed along with the area that is marked as anterior and posterior vibrating line fluid wax exists in impression technique any wax that is designed to flow at the mouth temperature can be used the seal is established after making final impressions before pouring the master cast once the anterior and the posterior vibrating lines are marked then the then we take the final impression so that the marked pps are transferred to it to the cast the pps area in the final impression is marked with fluid wax applied in excess and cooled below mouth temperature so that it gains resistant to flow the impression tray is inserted in the mouth and the patient is asked to periodically rec- uh, rotate the head so that the, all the function movements of soft palate are recorded now while recording the post term the patient head should be tilted downwards 30 degrees the blue dotted line shows the frankfort horizontal plane and in this you can notice the soft palate hangs down in this position so most the position in which the soft palate hangs out the most is would be at 30 degrees so that we can get the proper um proper position of the soft palate while taking the impression now the impression is removed after 4 to 6 minutes and is examined glossy areas 
show tissue contact and the dull areas represent the lack of contact. The wax is added to areas that appear dull and the procedure is repeated till the appropriate seal is achieved. So we add more wax that is flowable in the mouth temperature and the procedure is repeated till the seal is achieved. Advantages of this procedure is it is physiological technique. Over compression of tissue is avoided. Increased retention of the record base and convenience in jaw relation. And there is no need of for scraping the master cast. Disadvantages. Increased tear site time during the patient appointment. We have to do repeatedly until the seal is achieved. So it takes time. Handling of my materials is difficult. So it is technique sensitive. Care needed while pouring the master cast. Now low fusing compound. The low fusing compound like green stick compound can also be used to make an impression of the seal area using a similar procedure as described for the fluid wax. So we can, we have to repeat the procedure until this, uh, we uh, achieve the seal and it can be corrected. Errors in establishing posterior palatal seal area, first of all, under extension. Second, uh, the most common cause of posterior uh, palatal failure, seal failure, uh, uh, it leads to the loss of retention. The causes are using fovea palatine as the limit of posterior denture extension, gag reflex of the patient, prompting the dentist to intentionally leave the posterior border short, in incorrect delineation of the anterior and posterior vibratory end, and asking the technician to establish the seal on the cast arbitrary. Overextension leads to acceleration and painful deglutition. Covering of hamlar process leads to sharp pain in that region. This area should be identified, trimmed, and polished. Now, under post damming, this can occur if the patient's mouth was wide open while making fine impression. The seal area becomes taut, taut in this position and the space is created in other position. Under post damming can be verified by inserting a wet danger into the patient's mouth and in, in the inspecting the posterior border. If air bubbles are seen escaping under the posterior border, it indicates under damming. This is corrected by adding a new seal to the existing danger. Now over post damming, this is commonly occurs due to excessive scraping of the master cars, especially in the hamlet notch region. Mild over damming in the hamlet notch region can cause irritation to the mucosa and excessive post-timing displaces the danger. Thank you.